Does the size and shape of the Q-tip really matter much? The short answer is no, although for applying spin, a small diameter shaft and rounder tip are generally recommended. First, there is really no large difference among the typical shaft sizes shown here, although for solid maple shafts and some carbon fiber shafts, a larger diameter will result in more cue ball deflection and will have a stiffer hit. But these things are mostly a matter of personal preference. For more information, see the links in the description or pinned comment below. If you use a closed bridge, you might have a shaft diameter preference, but it really makes no difference with an open bridge. One factor related to both tip size and shape is the shoulder height, which is related to tip life. With a rounder tip, the shoulder is smaller, and as the tip wears down, the shoulder size shrinks. With a round tip, a small diameter shaft will have longer tip life since there is more shoulder to wear down. If the tip is too round on a large diameter shaft, there might not be any shoulder at all. A flatter tip on a large diameter shaft will have the largest shoulder and the longest tip life. One possible problem with a large diameter shaft is limited backspin potential. The shaft on the left is smaller than the one on the right, and both tips are about as low as they can go relative to the table. The tip contact point on the cue ball is higher for the larger shaft, so for this tip shape, the larger shaft cannot apply as much backspin as the smaller shaft. Some people judge the amount of spin applied by visualizing tips or half tips of cue displacement from center ball. Here, two half tips of spin is shown for both a small shaft and a large shaft with the same tip roundness. Obviously, if you move a large shaft a full tip width down, the resulting tip contact point will be lower. So does a larger shaft allow you to put more spin in the ball? No, unless you blindly use tips of spin and fail to judge the desired tip contact point correctly. Now let's look at additional effects related to tip shape. First, the difference between a U.S. nickel, penny, or dime radius tip is unimportant in a practical sense. Here, all tip shapes are shown on an 11 mm shaft. The difference in tip shape is so small, it is almost difficult to tell them apart. The difference is much smaller than many people might think. Here's a comparison of nickel and dime tip shapes for three different Q offsets from center. For an extreme comparison, also shown as a theoretical round tip where the tip radius is the same as the shaft radius. This is a much rounder tip than anyone would use, and it is at the limit of what is possible. Look at where the red and blue lines cross the cue ball surface, defining the tip contact point for the dime, red circle, and nickel, blue circle, tip shapes. Notice how close together the contact points are for the nickel and dime shapes for each tip offset. At the largest tip offset, giving maximum spin, you can clearly see a difference, but it is very small. This makes it clear that there really isn't any important difference between a nickel and dime tip shape, despite what many people might think. This diagram compares tips of different roundness on shafts of the same size for a given tip offset from center. The rounder tip obviously creates more spin than the flatter tip for this cue position, but the differences in tip roundness are very large in this comparison. So does this mean a rounder tip can apply more spin? Not really. Here's another way to look at the comparison. The cues are positioned to create the same tip contact point and amount of spin, but the cue with the rounder tip is clearly closer to the cue ball center for less apparent offset. A rounder tip cannot apply more spin, but it can do so with less cue offset from center. The flatter tip can apply the same amount of spin, but with a different cue position, assuming the tip is round enough, as we will see later. A flatter tip is better if you want to limit the amount of unintentional spin that can be applied, for example to reduce possible cue ball deflection due to alignment errors. With a flatter tip, the tip contact point will be closer to the center of the cue ball for a given tip offset from center. Generally, the tip must be rounded to allow a full range of tip positions. With a large offset, if the tip is too flat, it will contact the cue ball on the outer edge of the tip. This will not give reliable contact and a miscue will be more likely. The contact point is already at the edge of the tip. And adding even more spin would make the edge contact even less reliable. This diagram compares two shaft sizes for both nickel and dime radius tips with hits at the miscue limit to impart maximum spin. The large diameter shafts are on the top and the rounder dime radius tips are on the right. Notice that the small diameter shaft results in contact closer to the edge of the tip. The nickel radius tip has the least room to spare. The tip needs to be rounder on a small diameter shaft to prevent tip edge contact over the full range of spins. 
However, even at a diameter of 10 millimeters, which is very small, the nickel shape is still round enough to prevent tip edge contact. On a larger diameter shaft, the tip doesn't need to be as round to maintain good contact over the full range of spins. To prevent tip edge contact, the diameter of the shaft needs to be big enough based on the shape of the tip. This diagram shows the minimum required shaft diameter for each tip shape to span the full range of spins. A dime radius works on any shaft larger than 9 mm. With a quarter radius, the shaft diameter needs to be at least 12 mm to prevent edge contact. As a general rule, to prevent tip edge contact, a tip needs to be rounded to a radius less than the shaft width. So a 9 mm shaft needs a tip radius less than 9 mm, a dime or rounder. And a 12 mm shaft needs a tip radius less than 12 mm, a quarter or rounder. The main point of this video is that the shaft size and tip shape really don't make much difference, except at the extremes of very round or very flat tips on very large diameter shafts. A nickel shaped tip on any common shaft size between 11 and 13 millimeters is acceptable. Although, if you have a very small diameter shaft, less than 11 millimeters, the tip should be rounded to a dime shape. The tip on a large diameter shaft can be flatter, which will limit unintentional spin. But if the shaft is too large, or if the tip is too flat, contact with the edge of the tip will be more likely, and the amount of backspin possible will be limited. I want to thank Patrick Johnson for providing some of the diagrams used in this video. Thanks, Pat! I hope you found the information in this video interesting and helpful. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.